My club started a long, long time ago in 2001 before I was even born. The club was the first in Kinsale to give girls a chance to play team sport. We welcome all ages. We currently have over 200 members in our club. Last year was one of the most successful years in our club's history when we won five West Cork A titles. We here in Kinsale have a tradition of players representing their county on the national stage. Last year alone we had 10 players wearing the red jersey, including five-time All-Ireland winner Orla Finn. Kinsale ladies football team have had great success in their short history. We hope to continue to build on these achievements by continuing to promote our players and our facilities. In order to do this we need one thing. I love the little girl at the start of it. Um, the club was founded in 2001, which would be before I was even born. Um, and then the kick as well. Not much social distancing in the last bit, but we can assure you that, that was filmed uh, back, back before uh, the days when all of this was going on. Um, if I can come to you first, Joe, the, the role of a sponsor of a national sporting organisation uh, is not necessarily to do good within the community, but... Lidl has really taken this on. We'll see the success of that from a business point of view and the research which we'll have after this. Um, what is it about the, you know, getting engaged in the communities that is so important to you as a, as a retailer and as an organization? Yeah, well, uh, thanks for having us on, Rob, first of all. Um, as you say, when you're when you're sponsored one of the the major sporting bodies in the country, um, there's there's enough to be keeping busy with just working with the with the games themselves. But I think um, as maybe hopefully some of the members are aware and the general public in Lidl, there is a very big uh, focus on corporate social responsibility and how we can kind of actually give something back to the, the communities that we're based in across the country. Unfortunately for us. Uh, through our work with the LGFA, we have access to kind of uh, to people on a local level and on a club level around the country, and basically that, that's kind of where the where the reasoning and objectives behind it of, of trying to really get into the communities and actually bring something positive to them, as opposed to just supporting with, with obviously the financial side and promoting the game itself. And um, I think the opportunity to to work with our charity partner Jigsaw was uh, was something that really dovetailed very nicely i think it, it takes a lot of boxes for for ourselves and for for mike and jigsaw and for the lgfa as well and um, i think yeah, as i said it just really it really brings more of that community message and to look after the kind of your, your mental health and well-being as a wider wider message around the the sporting element of it it it's a it's a simple program the one good club the five elements that you go through and it's it's nicely broken down into into bite-sized chunks mike was it something that was is, is kind of central to what Jigsaw does in terms of the basics, in terms of the fundamentals when it comes to, to mental health and how important is the reach of sport towards bringing it into the younger people and people who we might not think of as being particularly vulnerable because they're together as a team and as a community, but they're often going through their own challenges. Sure, sure. Good morning, Robin. Thanks, thanks for having us on. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the One Good Club uh, initiative was really something that was core to what we do in Jigsaw. Jigsaw would probably be best known for offering direct service, direct supports to young people across currently 13 locations across the country. But in tandem with that, we, we, we do and always have done a huge amount of work in the community. So in schools, in workplaces, uh, with, different, uh, with different elements of, the, of, a, of, of a community infrastructure, if you want. And one of those is, is very much clubs and sport. Um, and uh, when we had the opportunity to work alongside uh, Jigsaw, who were or alongside uh, Lidl and the LGFA, it was, it was something that really brought together a huge amount of the elements of the work that we do in the five a day for your mental health. It's a, 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 as you point out, Rob, it's a very simple message. It's, it's five simple things that individuals and clubs and communities can do on a daily basis. And if, and if you do them and, and check in regularly with them, it does have, and it's proven to have a really positive and powerful impact on one's mental health. And for us, that that you know that club infrastructure is something that's really important because within it are a number of key role models, a number of key one good adults, which is really important to us. Those being coaches, 
those being uh, uh, members of the club and also those being the senior players. So when we had the opportunity to to bring all those elements, all those ingredients together, um, one good club was 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 the pilot that was run around this time last year was a huge uh, success. And and you just highlighted the word yeah, uh, the club in Kinsale. And when speaking to some of the members of the club, they didn't just say one good club was great for our club. They said it was really amazingly strong and impactful for the for the town of Kinsale as a whole. And 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 it's it's uh, it's as you say, it's a relatively simple idea. Um, uh, but it really hands over the keys and hands over the power to the clubs to really take on board some simple key messages and to add value to everybody across the club community, but also the wider community as a whole. You are working across the wider community as well and, and, and reaching out to a number of different partnerships. Does the sport have a particular relevance? It does. I mean, it's hugely important. Obviously, uh, um, the uh, the fact that that being active uh, is is uh, uh, is is a has has really positive correlations with positive mental health. The 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 link between positive physical health and mental health are are are, are long proven. We undertook a, a, a very large study around this time last year. It was actually published called the My World Survey. And what we did is we asked about twenty thousand young people across the country, kind of two broad areas. One, what negatively impacts on your mental health, and the second piece, what what positively supports it and again and again really strong there was sport was being active was working out was was and and it, it, it comes up really really strong and we know that those who were who were involved in organized sports or even in individual sports or anything that gets them out and gets them active has a really direct and positive impact on one's on 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 one's mental health, and we would have seen that message being being repeated again and again throughout the last ten months of COVID, where there was a lot of communications that were focused on make sure that you use the time that you have to be active and 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 uh, and to get out, and it's hugely important for us. Uh, it's hugely important for individuals. It's important that that group dynamic in, in, in sport is important for, for building and maintaining positive relationships, for achieving and achievement and self-esteem is really important factors in mental health. So sport ticks a huge amount of boxes in supporting ourselves as adults, but also particularly supporting young people in developing some key life skills and, uh, and adding resilience. That's a hugely important factor for positive mental health. Great to know and great to just have it reiterated again there's many different supporting bodies in the room most of whom are dealing with children and that sense of, of importance um a warm welcome to you Emer. i guess most of the kids in your charge are probably being active and loud and noisy out in the uh, in the playground uh, or the close at the moment um the the, the sense of um you know of, of your being there as as an elite player uh, within the Donegal team um, in in ladies football, how relevant has it been for for you as a group when there have been so many changes this year and so many different challenges to be faced? You're probably seen within your community as being uh, should be all right, should be one of the tough ones. That team there should they've got everything going for them. Um, but how? How has it been as a as a player as well as an ambassador, obviously for the for the One Good Club initiative? Well, I think um, the the whole initiative has really come around at the best possible time. You know, with the lockdown and the current restrictions that we've seen throughout the country, um, I think Lee and Jigsaw couldn't have picked better time in you know to launch this initiative because it's really been the most important time in all of our lives to have that extra wee bit of support. Um, I've been a member of the Donegal ladies team um, for 11 years and of course I played longer for my own club Terman. and as you said you know I've had a real sense of camaraderie from every team I've been part of and you know I felt myself even during this time you know as you know a 26 year old someone who's been you know well established as a teacher that you know I've struggled as well without that routine of sport you know the certainty of sport and you know knowing that you know every night or every second night that I was going to see my friends see my teammates and have that security of you know routine um so i think having access to you know the knowledge that i've gained just from working with jigsaw and from working with the lgfa and Lidl on this new initiative it has you know really given me a huge platform to support others and i've learned so much myself from being an ambassador for Lidl and you know helping out with the the, the one good club initiative during this time and you know it was such a challenging time for all of us not to mention the young people in our community you know 
with our young people, they're so used to routine. They go to school, they go to their training, you know, they do their homework. But this year, everything's just been turned upside down. They have no routine. They have no schedule. They have no one-to-one -one contact with their teachers, their friends, their coaches, their teammates. So this has been a real time where they've had to really look at themselves and, you know, be by themselves for huge quantities of time and of course as we know sometimes that can be hugely dangerous for our young people um, so having the likes of our one good club there to support these children during that time knowing that whenever they come back to normality with their clubs and their skills that there are people there to support them and you know as we were just saying you know having access to that one good adult has been so so important in my own community just knowing that there's someone there that the children can trust that they have a mentor there to know that they have support in some capacity it has been hugely beneficial to the people of my community, not to mention the people across Ireland. Uh, it, it, it certainly has. We were out training with my under 15 uh, ladies football group last night in the lashing rain um, and uh, nobody was moaning, nobody was giving up. They just loved being out there and, and getting out of themselves. I don't know whether you heard um, John Shields, we were just talking to from Manchester United, and he was saying that the, in his eyes, this is really just the beginning, that this is going to be uh, an impact which is going to run through in his view through to 2024. And it is, it's the, it's the kids who are transitioning from our national school into secondary school that are going to be the hardest hit. Is it something that you see in, in terms of the, you know, the kids that you're seeing on a, on a day to day basis that, that there is a change, that there is a way in which we need to be more careful with them? Well, I completely agree. You know, I actually teach in a school with a thousand girls. So, um, you know, there's a huge number of girls coming in and out of our doors every day. And only a small portion of those girls, you know, take, take um, part in sport in some capacity. Every child has different interests. And, you know, we are very blessed with the girls that do play Gaelic football in our school. There is a real sense of community there. But um, I think one of the most important things as a teacher and as a coach is that, you know, I have the skill set now to be more aware of how I can help and support these students. Because as you know yourself, um, life is a lot different from whenever I was doing my leave search, from when we all sat our leave certs. There definitely is a huge amount of stress on these students these days. You know, demands of the coursework for school, demands of technology, everything that's going on in their lives outside of school. There's a huge pressure on these girls and, you know, boys coming into school every single day. I have noticed a huge difference in the students um, from pre-lockdown to post-lockdown. Um, they're just a lot happier to be here, to be amongst their friends, to be learning, to have the freedom of, you know, leaving the house every day for the few hours and going home. And I think they do have a new appreciation for being in the classroom, as do we. You know, I didn't love teaching online myself. You know, it was, you know, there was a huge amount of workload added to that as well. But I think there's definitely a, a, a great appreciation now for being together um, in the classroom again. And I think with initiatives like One Good Club, you know, when it's in the media, the children can see it every day. It's it's more open. It's It's okay to talk about your mental health. We all have an increased awareness now of how to support each other um, through these difficult times because we've all had our bad days, especially during lockdown, whenever we couldn't leave the house or you couldn't go out and train. So, you know, we need to build on these links with the students and just create that environment where if a student is struggling, whether it be on the sports field, in the classroom, just in the community, that they know that they have the support and that there's facilities there to support them in the ways that they, they need as well. Another thousand young girls coming through potentially to play for Donegal Ladies Football in the years to come. As a as a Dublin fan, I can only apologise for uh, for Shada Hearn's uh, miraculous goal against you coming in off the post. Um, but your day will come. Um, Joe, um, fine ambassador, the uh, Lima is there, and the point that she makes there about the, the schools, the clubs, the counties, that has been very much throughout. Lidl's partnership with the LGFA as well. This isn't just about the All Ireland final at Crow Park on you know on December the twentieth. This is about you know connecting through various different teams as well. Has that really come to the fore again during twenty twenty now with all of the different units that you've been working with and supporting? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so eloquently put by both Mike and Ema there. And as you say, uh, Ema, along with the three other one good club ambassadors have been, been a huge part of everything we've been doing and have been, been really great ambassadors for the for the programme so far. Um, 
yeah, like, as I was kind of saying earlier, I think the opportunity to engage on a local level in individual clubs and kind of where it matters really, I suppose, in people's daily lives, like it's great to see the the increase in, in attendances at finals and across the championships and leagues and, and the TV coverage and media coverage. But at the end of the day, for for a young girl who, who's just starting out her ladies getting football career, it maybe that's not as important as, as the kind of um, access she has at her, at her own local level to to play the sport and to, to be welcomed into the community and to, to have kind of mentors and, and peers and friends that she that they can speak to and and feel like that they really have that support and I think Gaelic Games as a whole obviously there's a, there's a huge element of community involvement in particular and that that uh that sort of area of, of being being local and being proud of where you're from and supporting your own is something that we really really care about as well and, and being involved with the AJFA and, and the likes of Jigsaw that's something that we really want to provide something tangible for the for the service users for the AJFA members for for anyone that's engaging with, with these programs and with the wider LGFA association that that really they're seeing benefits benefits to, to their wider lives I guess than just seeing that, that ladies getting football is getting more promotion and has a has a strong sponsor on board we definitely want to be able to deliver something to to people in their daily lives that that hopefully we can leave a bit of a legacy for however long we're involved in ladies getting football that that there'll always be a legacy left of something more positive than just the just the basic sponsorship. Yeah there was a fear I guess after the first lockdown in the summer when everything was disrupted and we couldn't train we couldn't coach that the number of uh, you know, the players might actually drop off, that if you fall out of the habit of it and you're at that certain stage and age in your life, uh, we were blown away. It was, you know, it was not only did everybody come back, but we had girls who hadn't been playing with us for a year or two that were coming back into the club as well. And that's a real importance of just finding somewhere to go outside of your room. Doesn't matter what you're doing, just make sure that you're doing it with, with somebody. And that's been great. And um, Mike, if I can just finish off with you, the that sort of vista of this being a, a long-term impact, if, if not in terms of the way that we move and the way that we act, but certainly in terms of the way that we feel about ourselves, is that something that you're very conscious of as a, you know, as a charity and a service provider, that this is something which is going to be long-term in, uh, in terms of getting out and helping people? A hundred percent, Rob. Uh, um, uh, you know, the 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 often said we're in unprecedented times, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, that's not going to end. Come, you know, come come um, come summer twenty twenty one. What we've seen in the last ten months is uh, is a huge surge in demand for our services right across the country, and also our our online um, uh, services. We've seen a fifty percent increase in young people crossing our thresholds, both both uh, virtual and physical. And while all of those young people who are coming to us, COVID might not necessarily be the number one reason why they're there, but it's certainly part of every young person's story now. For many people, the restrictions that have been in, uh, put in place have really accelerated um, issues that they've had around building relationships. Uh, family conflict has really come to the fore where we're increasingly being forced or, or, or certainly being encouraged to uh, to spend some more time in, in, in more confined environments. And often um, many young people aren't lucky to have supportive, um, uh, supportive family structures. And that's been a real challenge. And also, uh, and, and, and Emer mentioned it, um, young people have, they've just been stripped of the ability to have those important transitions in their lives, be it moving from third level to, uh, or second level to third level, celebrating graduations undertaking exams and it's it's COVID has really taken a direct hit on on young people in particular i mean you know youth uh, unemployment numbers among young people about 68 percent of all those um who, who were who were currently out of work because of COVID are, are are those under the age of 25 so there's a huge uh, immediate impact of COVID on young people but we don't necessarily see that suddenly disappearing once this magic vaccine comes and fixes everything we're definitely in it for the long play COVID has changed us as an organization, changed how we deliver services and supports and, and, and indeed change how we think about that into the future. Um, Jigsaw come January uh, you know, of this year versus December of this year is a very different organization. And I think we will be, and a lot of that has been, uh, I think COVID has been the catalyst for a lot of that. So certainly when we talk about you know, our COVID response, uh, our longer term response is very much as John said, uh, into the long run, 
and also as John said, which I think is a, is a point very well made, it isn't just the job of organisations like yourselves to be there for young people. It is everybody's role. That role of one good adult is accessible and easy and achievable. And certainly we'd be looking for everybody across the country to help us because um, we currently have uh, concerns over our ability as a relatively small mental health organisation to supply the demand that we're seeing. Um, it's, it's high and it's getting higher. Um, uh, so I think it really is going to it's 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 really going to take a national effort to uh, to support those who are who are really struggling at this time. Okay, we all need to put our hands up. Um, good people coming together uh, around good projects and having a good effect. That's what we can do. That's what you are doing. Um, my thanks for taking the time out uh, this morning to Mike Mansfield from Jigsaw, to uh, Joe Booney from Middle, and to Emo Gallagher. We managed to get in before the bell went. Uh, before you have to get back to the, to the classroom. But uh, thank you all for, uh, for taking the time with us uh, this morning. We 